Say good morning. Time to milk. Put a little extra feed in there so I could film this. <laughs> She's not complaining. Let's get milk and Miss Salt here. Okay. This is the best way I can film in here. First things first, hot soapy water. You gotta disinfect those. Woo. See that? Those are her teats. We're gonna clean them up. I've got hot soapy water. All right, so we're gonna clean her teats and all underneath. You can also brush the goat, brush the hair off. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Sometimes you're just going with the flow, people. Sometimes you have to move quick when you're milking certain animals. Their patients are very thin when they're hungry, the weather, all sorts of things like that. But you do need to make sure that you are, see that right there? Wait a minute. Well, I'll show you in a second. You wanna get those teats nice and clean. Then I have a clean towel right here. Clean towel every time, every time, lots of laundry. Then you're gonna come up underneath, let me show you. And we're gonna dry her off. And I try to, whew, hello. I try to knock around a lot to, you know, get those loose hairs off or whatever. You know, I'm not like being crazy, but I am trying to get everything ready here. All right, so we're getting all of these ready. Now we're going to put the camera down for a second and I'm gonna express her a good three to five times so I get any bacteria out before I express her before I actually milk, okay? Okay, all right, so I'm gonna do this left-handed. One, two, three, four, five. One, one, there we go. One, two, three, four, five. You wanna start from the top and you gravitate with your fingers down to express her, okay? Because you want to get that milk from all up in the udder down through the teeth. You want that cream, you want that milk, you want all the good stuff, right? Yeah. Okay, so now that we've cleaned her, dried her, she's still eating, we get our clean milk, milk pail. There's different types. I, my, this one has a nice little lid. You're gonna place it underneath there and we're gonna start, it, start the milking process right here. See, okay. Okay, so I gotta get moving because when her food runs out, her feed, she can be a little impatient. So I've got the right hand on her left teeth because I'm right-handed. I'm milking her from the right side because I'm right-handed. And I try not to pull. I think by default, sometimes we do. But I'm trying to more use my fingers and my forearms to actually you work it down from the top down now her left teat always empties quicker than her right teat like i it just this right teat just keeps on going man it just forever <laughs> she still that was a good one so i like to make sure that i'm working from the top of the teat up near the udder and working it down and I do milk her out, okay? Somebody was asking about that. Yes, I like to milk her out. You wanna get all the milk out. That's how you know when to stop. So basically you can see, they'll be, I'll show them. They're, they can become really flat. There's no more milk, okay? And I just sort of work it out. You don't want anything left in there if possible because it might build up, you know, potential mastitis or bacteria. Now, if she had a baby nursing her, we'll talk about that in a minute the baby would basically finish her off. You would be co-milking, if you will, with a, a, a goat kid or with a calf, if you're milking a cow. Okay, so she's done. That's it, Sh shake it off, baby. <laughs> I got the milk right here. Lid, uh, did I get anything on my lid? Make sure your lid is clean. There's something on my lid, so I'm not putting it back on there. Now, what I do, hang on, I'm gonna reach over you. Hang on here, guys. I'm gonna take my, towel soapy soapy towel did i leave the spike back over there i bet i did i thought i brought it so you can see i'll show you here in a minute i'm just cleaning her off okay she's done eating so she's just standing here right now she's being pretty good but she got a lot of feed so she's happy okay that so i'm done with that 
Then I'm going to dry her off again, okay? Then I come in with that spray. I've shown you on other videos. I'll show it here in a minute. I'm going to have to go get it. I left it on the shelf like a silly, silly heart. Um, I just dry her off, okay? Then I just pop her loose, and she's done. But I do like to use Fight Back Spray when I don't forget it because I'm a silly goose um, because it does help to keep away mastitis. And that is how you milk your goats. So you can see how flat, like those big old teats are just flat now. So, but by this evening, you'll notice they're starting to fill up and in about another 24 hours, you'll be ready to milk again. Cause I only milk her once a day, once enough, uh, excuse me, once a day is enough for Miss Salt. I'm getting anywhere from a pint to a quart a day, just depending upon what she wants to do, but she's such a good girl. You ready to go? Did you get your belly full, baby girl? Did you get your belly? Oh, you're so, I know, you're the best girl ever. I love you. We're gonna get some more Fig Newtons, baby. More treats. What I normally do is put this in my feed bucket with their feed, because what I do is I feed all of my other goats first. We give them hay, we give them feed, we give them their mineral, we get them completely situated very quickly while they're distracted. Then I go into the milking stall and she comes in there and I have a couple of other goats that go are in there with me. Um, they have their babies. So that's why you see them. But as soon as the weather breaks, they're all gonna be turned loose, okay? So it helps to protect the babies um, and they're all bonded together. Salt, while she is not nursing any goat kids right now, um, she's very bonded to three specific goat kids right now. She's like their auntie, okay? She really, really is. She protects them like crazy. But this is fight back and I'm gonna go spray it on her teats and I just do a couple little spray. It's like an aerosol type thing. She's not really, aer yeah, kinda. Um, it sprays this kind of blue material onto her teat. Some of you all do a, a dip. I don't do a dip. When I dip, you dip, we dip. This works for me, you do what works for you. But if you've not tried this, at a minimum, I would have this in my medicine cabinet for my goats and my cows. Even if they're not in milk, I've learned the hard way. It's probably a good idea, depending on a situation you could have. You might want to have this. Okay. <laughs> we played a little bit of ring around the rosy. I just went underneath there and squirted her. Sprayed the teats real good with it. And of course she was hip hopping around. It's cold, which they don't like that part. Now, if they're on the stand and they're distracted by feed and all that, they kind of just could, they might raise their leg a little bit, raise their foot. Not a big deal, right? But uh, just to let you know, so I did get her sprayed, but remember, fight back. I'll put a link down in the description if you would like to check it out. I know they sell it on Amazon. I get mine from my farm supply store. Various places sell it so you can price compare. But if you have any dairy animals or if you are looking to get dairy animals and you're gonna be milking, hear me out. This is something I really feel you need on the shelf. Hey, Vinny. Hey guys, check out Vinny standing here competing for feeding hay just like everybody else. Doing good, buddy. Oh, I thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, baby. Tweety, that's not for you, honey. Tweety, what are you doing, sweetheart? <laughs> Guys, y'all are so nosy. So I have placed Squirrel right here next to Martha, and this is pretty much how they hang out all day long. So I'm looking to breed them hopefully in a couple of weeks. I've decided to wait till March if possible. So that, that way we have warmer weather, hopefully when she takes and has babies, fingers crossed. Okay, okay. Let me see if I can sit on this bench. Look at all these babies. Ow, look at all these babies. Look at all these babies. All these big babies. You guys are rascals. Stop nibbling on me. I don't need a hickey. Okay, so all these little varmints are gonna be done bottle feeding. I've made the decision. I extended it, you know. So I'm they're on one bottle a day. I'm probably gonna end it by the end of this week. I know that's the shadow, guys. I can't help it. Stop pulling on my shirts, you varmints, you sweet varmints. Hang on. Tweety, do you want to be seen, sweetie? Doing so good. She's a little rough around the edge. Hey, are you pulling on my hair? Hey, are you pulling on my hair, Pinto? What are you doing? Do you want to say hi to everybody? 
I love you. You's, I know. You're my girlfriend. You're the best girl. <laughs> so every day when I'm up in the barn, I try to clean everything up as much as possible. Sweep. Scrape things off, move things, throw things away. I like to spray just a freshener. This is not my freshener spray. This is actually this is actually Myers, but I spray it here on the tops, just a little, just a little edge. Makes it smell better, cleans it up a little bit. You do what you want. Um, the turkeys do make a little bit of a mess. I ain't gonna lie, and they push you around a lot, especially the big guys, it's because they're hungry. I will tell you that if you want to go through feed faster than Rudy's Goody. Get yourself some turkeys. That's why people try to get them and then process them within a certain time frame because they will eat you out of everything. <laughs> they really, really will. Um, so we always like to keep options, obviously, um, with our animals. Um, some of you are asking what we do with our rabbits right now. I'm looking to breed. I, I haven't, um, I've got this little loose thing in this hat. I need to clip it. Um, I like to leave food options open for me in terms of my farm. So some of you are asking, have we processed some of our animals? Yes, I've answered this question 1.6 million times. That's okay, I'll answer it again. We get new people every day. Uh, yes, we have, um, I hate it, um, but it is what we do. That's what homesteading can be about, depending on which way you wanna go. Um, but a lot of these animals are our family. So it just depends on the situation. Um, just like Granny did, you've got to have food options available to you that are the best that you can get and that you don't have to get in the car to go rely on. So that's my philosophy. So I am breeding more rabbits, hopefully in the next month. I've decided to wait, like I told you earlier, I'm going to wait at least, I'm going to try to wait till I get closer into March. That way if she takes it will push us into April because you're looking at 30 plus days, 30 plus days. It can be loud in here. I apologize. This is just part of it. Um, as far as my goats go, um, they are for milk and a lot of love. As far as my cows, they are for milk. Now I have processed steers in the past. Right now I don't have any. I have three milk cows. I honestly, I will be honest with you though. I told you this before. Miss Cookie, who is uh, my youngest dairy cow, um, I don't think she's going to be a good milker. I think she's going to be a good milker for a baby, for her calf. Uh, like I said, we're moving in to breed our cow, our cows this year, so it's going to be a lot of work. Um, but I, I, I'm just, she's so skittish. Um, her mother's not, and of course, Miss Daffodil is not. So I've got two milk cows that are, are great milk cows, do great. So I'm not real concerned about it. I mean, one is enough, really, and I have two, almost three. But I figure if uh, Miss Cookie gets bred and she gives us um, obviously some offspring, then I can work with that. If obviously it's a bull calf, then I will turn it into a steer. And of course that will be for the freezer. I'm not gonna make, make any bones about it. And it's tough because honestly, one of the sweetest animals on the farm is definitely your steers. Um, they, once you, uh, once you take the walnuts, uh, you do have a different beast. It's a much calmer beast and they can be really sweet, but you have to watch them because they can get really, really big and be dangerous by default just because of the size of the beast versus the little human woman person. <laughs> so I'm only five, four and a half, so I'm not that big. So you put me up against a 700 pound, 1200 pound steer. Guys, I'm sorry to tell you, I don't care how rough and tough you all think you are out there. Uh, you're no match for these beasts. You really, we really aren't. It's, it's a miracle from God. Um, and he's given us some wonderful gifts with these creatures. They are just massive. Hi, sister. Where are you going? <laughs> sister. You doing okay today, girlfriend? You can go in the barn. Okay. Let's go up here and check on the cows. They're doing good. They love this weather because it's not cold. Uh, it's cool. It's very wet. Now the mud, who likes mud? We are, oh, it's so gross y'all, the mud's gross. Cows don't really care. They'll just lay right down in it. Uh, and uh, they're finishing up their breakfast here, nibbling all the little bits that are left. But uh, the farm is definitely growing. And I wanna encourage you guys 
to definitely be involved with whatever you can in terms of agriculture. And uh, because number one, it's good for your mind. Number two, it's most important for skill sets. Number three, it's so awesome for you physically. You need to get up every single day and do something. So if you're like, well, I live in a condo, Patera, I really don't have a dairy cow. I mean, I get that. Uh, but you do need to get up and be physical. This is a lot of physical work. And uh, let, me, let me turn around here, let me show you. But I just wanna say, I understand that I'm fortunate to get out and be able to work out and do all the things that I'm doing outside with all of these animals. But I wanna encourage you to do whatever you can to support your local farmers. It's really expensive and really tough right now. I know you know this and everybody has their own burdens, but any which way that you can support your local farmer, I encourage you to do so. Uh, it is critical because it is places like this that I understand that we are able to teach and talk about things. If it's not even in, in, you know, in real time, you're standing here with me, we have this capability here through YouTube, which is such a blessing to be able to do so. It really, really is. I know we talk about social media in such a negative light a lot of the time, but I, I do wanna focus on the positives as well because there's a lot of people that have really good homesteading channels that are teaching or showing you things. Even if they talk about the world, uh, the world agenda and the politics and everything else like I do, we're still out here working several times a day and we're still showing you things. And we still are the people that a lot of you come to for questions, which is an honor. It really, really is. So we have to respect that. But there's Miss Cookie, lovey. And beautiful daffodil right there. See? <laughs> Being milked. It's not a new rodeo for daffodil for sure. So I just want to tell you real quick. My husband is getting a little bit better. I want to thank you for the prayers. I mentioned yesterday that he was sick. I, I think I'm, I'm obviously not a doctor. I wanted to be a doctor. <laughs> but I didn't get that far. Because I decided to have a bunch of babies instead. But I do think he has had the flu and he broke his fever today. I have done everything under the sun with him. You need to be very aggressive in terms of your health right now, guys. This is where I'm really going with this. You have to be really super aggressive. I, I'm not friendly when something is sick. I, and I don't mean that. What I mean by that is I'm very super aggressive. When we had COVID two and a half years ago and it was really bad for James, uh, I will tell you, I was so aggressive with him. Um, I mean, if he didn't, if he had felt a little bit better, uh, he would have been mad at me. But we, I got him through it. Just like with Vinny. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But with Vinny, uh, my, my goat that I almost lost a couple weeks ago, we literally brought back. We got him in time. Um, very, very aggressive in terms of his treatments. God healed him. I didn't. But you have to be aggressive. Right now, over the weekend, I've been very aggressive with James, and luckily he has gotten to the point where he knows, I, I mean, he may not tell you this, but he knows I'm right. <laughs> I'm like, take this. No, do this. No, you can't do that. Get up, get up, get up. Can't lay around and waller in it. You gotta get up, get up, get up. Go, wa walk the driveway one time. Well, today he's broken his 102 fever. He's down to 98.4. Now, he's not out of the woods. We have to keep an eye on everything. But I'm saying all the things that you see people uh, do, I'm telling you, a lot of them we do. And there are some things that I do on my own. And I know a lot of you ask me questions and you actually write me emails and you actually send me letters wanting me to kind of granny witch you. And I hate to tell you, you know as well as I do, I don't mean this in an ugly way. I, I really can't do that. Um, I'm uncomfortable doing that. And uh, I hope you don't take that personal. But I do highly recommend that you look into Jace Medical. There are certain things that are there. Jace Medical, a lot of you are already familiar with that and items that they have. Um, and it's very shameful that we can't just openly talk about a lot of things or we have to be very careful about how we talk about things. Um, I do recommend that you also get a book by Rosemary Gladstar. I think she's the best herbalist out there, one of. Uh, she's my favorite. Um, and her books are great. Make sure you have them on the shelf. And you know what to do with just some of the basics. You don't have to use everything. You don't have to know everything, okay? It's okay if you don't. But if you know some critical components and some critical things to do, it can really help you with a lot of things. And you should look into that. Oh, wait a minute. Hey, I saw Sister. Come here. Everybody wants to see you. Where's Ginger? I saw you run up out of the woods. Are you just assessing 
the squirrel situation, what are you doing? What are you doing? He's my wild hunter. So James is doing much, much better. In terms of the Super Bowl last night, we'll talk about this for just a quick second. Um, I did turn it off and on. I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to it. Um, I did think the Chiefs were going to win. I did think they were going to make sure the Chiefs won if they didn't. I mean, I mean, everybody goes, okay, the Chiefs are going to win. Uh, I don't care. Um, and some of the things that people are talking about today, I actually didn't see because I didn't pay that much attention. But I did see some of the interesting commercials, you know, with Jesus, uh, the, the Jesus ones. Y'all better be careful out there with all that stuff. <laughs> Um, and you know, there were some things, it was definitely more subdued. Um, I appreciate Usher giving, uh, some, uh, credit to God and his mama. I thought that was good, but, uh, I'm, you know, you know, there's some content there that, um, I don't know. Guys, we're in a strange world and, uh, there's a lot of things going on and I'm trying to encourage us to be as positive as we can and to be as involved as we can with our health and with our mind and, and being close to God and keeping our eyes open and watching because the deception right now is so thick. Now, this is not... <laughs> Let me clean them shoes off. The deception is super thick. And we've all given into it at some time. Meaning, you know, like I said yesterday on my video, we've all seen things over the years that... You know, because so many things seemed normal, you're like, ah, uh, you know, you blow it off. You don't take it serious or you, ah, uh, you don't pay attention. There's so much going on right now that it's, you, we just can't do that anymore. The time is now for us. So do the very best that you can to prepare. And this is where all this wraps around showing you my farm, showing you my daily chores, showing you, you know, I'm milking my goat this morning, whatever. You know, it's not only just to show the side of this life, but it's also to encourage you to try to be as self-sufficient as you can because it's great for the mind, it's great for the soul, it's great for the heart. We are the ones that are carrying the old ways, okay? What is that saying? You weren't born in the wrong generation. You're here to make sure that all of these traditions carry on. If that hasn't resonated with you yet, it really needs to. Like I said, you don't have to be out here with a dairy cow and own 25 acres and doing all these things to be carrying the old ways, okay? You can do a lot of the things, participate in so many things. And the most important thing is if you've got grandbabies, children, nieces or nephews, that you are involving them with you. They're going to remember all of these things. Don't you remember canning jam with your mamma or you going somewhere with your papa? There were, there were moments in your life, even if you were adopted, it's about the impression and the things that you were around, even if it was a teacher in school. I had some serious old school teachers growing up. And even luckily, my son, who is uh, going to be 24, he had a teacher in third grade. This was before we, you know, really got into homeschooling. He did have one amazing teacher in, when he was in the third grade. She was in her 70s, and she was strict, and she was old school, and people thought she was mean. I thought she was the best thing since sliced bread. Best teacher he ever had. One of the best teachers I've ever seen. And that's what we need. We have to bring around these old ways again. Never doubt yourself with these skills. Even if you're just learning to make bread, canning jam, going to a historic site, whatever you're doing, please take the kids. This is not for us so much, even though we talk about it. It is for the children because that's who they're coming after. Fritz, what are you doing? Oh. Well, I mean, it's important, okay? What <laughs> Cleanliness is next to godliness, says Fritz. That should be a meme. <laughs> well, guys, I'm going to get down here and strain this milk, and uh, we are doing much better. I'm not sick. My boys aren't sick. It got James, and apparently several of his co-workers got it too, so it's not just him. So we know where it came from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see how that happens? Floating along, and something happens. But here's the ultimate thing, and I'll shut up. I had all of the things that he needed because he is improving. He is improving, he's, you know, he, we're, he's doing much better. He's still under the weather, but he's doing better. But I had all of the things that he needed here at the house. 
Not that we are so close-minded to the point of when things get to a point where you might have to go see a doctor, okay? I'm not, we're not that far out. But I am saying we do try to give everything the good old college try here at home as much as we can and as naturally as we can. And once again, preparedness has worked out. Please take it serious. Like, subscribe, and share. Be peaceful. Keep praying. Don't mind all these crazy towns out there. Recognize it for what it is. Know the agenda. Know what's going on. But focus on your preparedness because it's going to save you in the end. It's going to buy you a whole lot of time, if nothing else. I love you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Hey, I know what you're going to say to me about Valentine's Day, but I am going to say one thing. If nothing else, give your sweetie a good smooch on Wednesday, okay? Do it today, too. She loves it. <laughs> he loves it. <laughs> I'll see you on the next video. Fritz, are you done? No, he's not. I'll see you next time.